Look at what it says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 8. And I'd like to bring it up, and uh, if we can get it up here where everybody can see it, but I think you're going to want to look at it in your Bible. But I want you to look at what it says. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing, now look now, which thing is true. Now notice the way this is phrased. This is true in him, listen now, and in you. Yes. Amen. So this is true in you. Yes. Not just in him. This is not just something we have from him, by him, or that he has, that we wish we had, or that we need transferred. This is already not going to be true. This is already true in you. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. Woo, glory be to God. A new commandment I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you. Now say this phrase with me. Because, because the, darkness the darkness is past. Is and the true light, and the true light now, shines. now shines. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now when you read that phrase, here's what I want to say to you. Anytime you're thinking about dealing with, running from, trying to fix, or talking about the past, you're in the dark. Wow. Come on, That's come on, right. come on. That's so That's good. Right. Come on. Yes. Huh? There's no way to see how to get out of where you are if you're looking backward trying to do it. It's impossible. The light shines on the path forward. God's answer at the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army behind him was to tell the people to go forward. You may not know where forward is, but there is a path. And there is a path that's a supernatural one out into like it never happened. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, there's another phrase that the Lord's telling me out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word's established. And I believe the scripture, <clears throat> not the scripture, but uh, the Spirit of the Lord is here in this wonderful Holy Ghost meeting to cause these things to happen, to manifest in our midst. It's Luke chapter 4, and it's the story where Satan comes at Jesus. But I still remember I was in the state of Alabama uh, some, you know, some time ago when I was meditating on this and the word of the Lord came to me just like I'm talking to you. And I was about to step into a meeting and once again, he brings it up in my spirit. This is the second time and it has a specific application here tonight for those people I was just referring to. If you're dealing with the past, thinking about the past, struggling with the past, if you're not giving yourself permission to be totally restored, to go forward, to take these steps, if you're not, you're in the dark. And you're never coming out as long as you're going to deal with it, cycle it, think about it, talk about it, because your acknowledgement has to be what God has done in you through Christ Jesus. Because the true light now shines, and it's true in Him, but it's already true in you. The fact that your dark past is past is already true, not just in him. Amen. It's true in you. Yes. Glory to God. Do you see that? Yeah. Glory be to God. Now, the word of the Lord came to me when I was in Alabama, and he was referring to this issue. And where Satan came to Jesus and said, if you'll worship me, all shall be yours. And I'm not going to go through all the temptations, but I want you to look at Jesus' response to the devil. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee, talking to the devil now, Get thee behind me, Satan. Where is Satan's proper position? Behind you. So the only place he can talk to you is from is your past. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. And the word of the Lord came to me in Alabama, and I'm going to say to you under the anointing what he said to me that day. The Lord said to me, tell the people, it's time to put behind you what's behind you. That's right. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. And when he said it, I mean, something ripped through me. And I'm telling you right now, everybody in the sound of my voice, it is time to put behind you what's behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Glory be to God. You'll find it very interesting. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, we, he, he wants to remove the mixture out of your heart concerning how you see yourself. He doesn't want you in here struggling that you are what the Bible says you are, but I'm trying to achieve that because of what I did. See, that's two different people. You're not two different people. 
It's either true in him and true in you, or it's true that you're a big flat failure and you need to go on and leave now because there's no help for you. But you can't be both. You're either the righteousness of God in Christ or no unworthy sinner. But you can't be both. Huh? You're not like, I might be pregnant. You either are or you aren't. <laughs> huh? These things are true in the Spirit as well. And uh, notice what it says here in Mark chapter 3. Glory be to God. It says, And he called them unto him. Now that's after he cast the devil out. And we're talking about deliverance, right? And he said, how can Satan cast out Satan? So there's nothing from this world that can give you victory over this world. Right. Glory to God. So he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Say, but hath an end. Yes. That tells us right there, you can put Satan's works to an end. Yes. Yes. Say it out loud. I can. I have the authority. We have all authority in heaven and earth. And by the name of Jesus and the help of the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the everlasting word of the blood of the covenant of the everlasting God who cannot change, I can put every work of the devil in my life and put an end to it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. There's freedom in the house. Here's what he says here. He says, No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So here is a cardinal spiritual law that will never change. The strongest spirit shall rule. So if you're ever going to get free and conquer something, you're going to have to get strong in spirit. And there's only one thing that's going to strengthen your spirit, the Word of the living God. My Word is spirit. My Word is life. And you need to understand that you've got to eat this book. And 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 then get the spirit that wrote this book living in you. Because empty is not enough. That's another message that I need to preach. And it preaches, it's a title all of its own. And that is found in Matthew 12, where he cast the devil out of a man. He goes in far dry places, seeking rest, come back, finds the house empty, swept, and garnished. That means garnish means put in order and all of that. Yeah. But it was empty. Uh, empty, swept, so that means it was clean, not unclean, and put in order. So you got a life that's in order, you got a life that's clean, but you got a life that's empty. Yeah. Which means empty is not enough. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that spiritual law will always be. Now look at this. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. And blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. <coughs> but, now we've read this to mean there's an exception. There's one sin can't be forgiven. But that's not what he's teaching here. Now, there is an unpardonable sin, but very few people, almost nobody in the room even qualifies. So I don't have time to get into that. Because to commit that sin, you've got to qualify. And most of the people I know are such baby Christians, they couldn't even hope to qualify. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> I'm going to stand over here because I don't know if I'm get an agreement or if I'm stepping on long storied tradition he can, he, can, he can tie me to the whipping post later if need be <laughs> now it sounds like that there's an exception here there's, uh, but there's one sin left out but that's not really what he's saying and I'm going to point it out to you he says <clears throat> but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness now there's some clues here that's going to help you see this straight. But is in? Oh, well, what? Danger. Now you do realize that somebody that's in danger of something doesn't mean it's fixed. That's 
Spirit of the world is a blasphemer against the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. You have to understand anybody speaking against the Holy Ghost has got the Spirit of the world on them. Yes. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And they're in danger. I said they're in danger. They're in danger. I said they're in danger because they have resisted the only agent that can deliver them from this thing. And that's what Jesus is saying. You can never have what he came to bring if you speak against it. So you can never have what this move in here is bringing if you think this is out of order and not of today and of the devil and all passed away. How could you come in here? You could come and observe, but you'd go home saying, I just don't understand that. I just don't understand that. Those people are crazy. I ain't never going back. Oh, that scared me out of my mind. Well, thank God. That would be a blessing if it actually did scare you out of your mind. Because your mind is your problem. And you still have your mind, which is why you're scared of the God of heaven. You do realize you're not about being scared of God. Come on. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory be to God. Do you see it? It came to pass as he was praying. Do you see it, Brother J.D.? Thank you, Lord. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples. And he said unto them, so obviously they were sitting there listening to him pray, watching him pray. He obviously prayed like nobody they had ever seen, like none of the priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and he also got results. Because yeah. yeah. in that prayer room is where he went up and saw things. Yeah. That's why he sent them out by two and two in the chapter before this. It literally says he sent them out by two and two into different places because he beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Where'd he get that? In that prayer room. Mm -hmm. Amen. I said he got that in that prayer room. Yay. He got up in the spirit in the prayer room. Yeah. I said he got up in the spirit in the prayer room. Amen. That's where we're going to dominate these things. We need to stop dealing with the natural forces and the people so much and start dealing with the demons behind them. That's right. In fact, that leads me to something else real quick before we come back over here. But the point I'm trying to make is the Holy Ghost is the agent of all this. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, but let's, let's look at this in Mark 1. Now come right back. This is a huge, huge statement right here. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. My, my, my. Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> I want you to notice what it says in verse 35. And in the morning. Glory be to God. Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So what was he doing? Praying. Praying. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when he had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go. How did he know that he wasn't supposed to go back into that town and continue that meeting? Where did he get this instruction? Prayer. In the prayer room. Glory be to God. Amen. Do you see this? He said, let us go into the next towns. Now I want you to see this. Let us go into the next towns. Glory be to God. That I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Where did he get that instruction? Say in the prayer room. Now look at the next verse. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Yes. Somebody saying cast out devils. Yes. I'm telling you it is our assignment to deal with the devil in every town, over every vision, over every life. We have authority over him. And it's time for us to go to a place in the prayer room where the Holy Ghost on us is so tangible and real. It breaks through the situation. Glory be to God. And people that have been like they've been for 20 years and 30 years, you walk in the room and you walk up to them, next thing you know, they fall out of their chair and they get up and they're sane and you can't figure it out because they come from a line of five generations of manic depressives, but the demon streams and leaves. And it's all because of the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. 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 Glory to
And I don't mind announcing it. I came here to cast out devils. It's why I live. Yes. Yes. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. I have a purpose on earth. And that is to dispossess the devil from the territory bought by the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So while we're on our way back to Luke 11, let's go to Luke 4. Look at verse 36. Oh, my. The Lord gave me this just days ago, and he began to talk to me about this. It's a decade of deliverance. Shout it out. Say, it's a decade of deliverance. Decade. Notice what it says in verse 34. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits. Oh, and they come out. You better bet they do. You better bet they come out. As I was stepping into this room, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me, and uh, I began to write it down. I, I wrote it down and, and put it right here while we were, um, God began to deal with me about this with the Holy Ghost. And uh, I want to make sure that I've got the right thing. That are, there it is right there. Um, sometime before the turn of the year, uh, I've got the top here, Decade of Deliverance. And the Lord spoke to me, and I, of course I've known this for years. In Matthew 12 it says, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Right. So clearly the Holy Ghost is the agent of dispossessing the devil. Amen. He's the breaker. He's the one that breaks the yoke. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now we see him as the agent of God on a dark, chaotic earth. Amen. He's introduced to us as moving over an earth that's dark and out of order. Amen? Amen? And so what I want to say to you is what the Lord said to me. He began to say, tell the people the delivering agent is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. The delivering agent is the Holy Ghost. Yes. And here's what he said for me to tell you. The one hovering over the chaotic world in the beginning is the same spirit hovering over your chaotic life. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Bringing it into order. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. Glory be to God. That's why he's here. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. We were worshiping God tonight during worship by the Holy Ghost. The word of the Lord came to me and he said, he said, just ask the people. Just get them to think about this for a second. He said, uh, where would you be? Where would we be without our Lord and Savior submitting his ministry to the Holy Ghost? Amen. That thought never occurred to me just that way. But it dawned on me that he didn't do anything in his ministry that he did until he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, come on. That's right. It occurred to me that John the Baptist didn't want to do it, resisted it. <coughs> that he had to say, allow it to be. Yield. Submit yourself. Respond to what I'm telling you to do. It becomes us to fulfill. Yes. Evidently, he couldn't get fulfilled what he needed fulfilled without being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yay. He's the sinless Son of God, which means He is born, he is not born again, but He's the sinless Son of God, which means He's already born of the Spirit. Yep. But everybody in the Word of God has the same pattern. You must first be born of the Spirit, then you must be filled with the Spirit. Yep. Jesus is our pattern. He was born of the Spirit as a baby, but He didn't do any miracles for 30 years. Because his miracle ministry wasn't in who he was. It was in what was upon him. So what kind of ministry would Jesus have had had he not submitted to the Holy Spirit? What kind of ministry would Jesus have had had he not yielded to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit wanted to move in a situation? Well, I'll tell you what kind of ministry he'd had. First Church of the Frigidaire. Same kind of ministry people have today with no Holy Ghost. Just like the Sadducees and the Pharisees, full of religious tradition and no power. You see, his ministry that he would have had without the Holy Ghost every Sunday morning all across America. So we're the body of Christ. He wants us once again to submit to the very Spirit that made him Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Whew. 
Glory. It's the Spirit of the Lord we're talking about. Yes. Yes. No man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Yep. Right. Yes. And when he started preaching, first thing out of his mouth, first message, first church, first synagogue, first statement, first moment, I found myself in the book, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He hath anointed me. Otherwise, I'm not in the ministry. Mm. Otherwise, I have nothing to say because I have no power to deal with spiritual forces that have been binding you. He didn't cut the disciples loose in their own ministry till they got clothed, till they got empowered, till they got endued, till they got filled. Till they received the promise. The, the early church, the beginning of our church, knows no such thing as any Christian ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Paul spoke five languages. One of the most brilliant men of his day. His writings today are right up there with the greatest writings of any writer in all of human history. So you think 2,000 years later, we're smarter than him. How many languages do you speak? It's like what happened to Brother Jay, my spiritual father, once. He was in Colorado. I'll never forget it. And uh, he told me the story, but Mama Jeanette told it better, so I'd always have her tell it. Because she was there with him, and there was a man from Iran that was a Muslim. He walked up to Mama Jeanette because uh, he, he, he watched the whole thing. He'd never seen anything like that. And he says, uh, how many languages does your husband know? And she said, uh, <laughs> she kind of snickered. I know I love Mama Jeanette, you know. <laughs> she kind of snickered. She says, well, he only knows one. <laughs> and he doesn't speak that one real well. <laughs> That's a husband and wife thing, you know. <laughs> he said, oh, he knows no languages? She said, no. He said, I'm a linguist, he said. He just proper, you know. He said, I heard your husband speak in five different languages last night, and the inflection was perfect, and the fluency of the interpretation was perfect. I've never seen such a thing in my life. He said to Mama Jeanette, your religion has power. My religion has no power. He got born again that night. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I said I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the brote kele la ma shita na ma kole bre she kele la ma sote i kara la ma gre de malie tombra se gola la baki di anda gala le bara ninga le 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 ninga le le mara le le es ma kala le ande ne ge le bashi ti da. And he said that cloud was on him. He probably ministered that way to 400 people, and he was leaving the room. And he said all of a sudden, there's still small boys. And what he was teaching on, see, you need fathers in the faith. Yeah. This creeps me. I've never forgotten it. I don't talk about it a lot. I've never forgotten it. He talked about Jesus and how Jesus was. And his message that night, talking, all of that was a, kind of a sidebar, but it blessed my, did it bless you? Yes. Bless my life so much. But he talked about something that happened to him in that very same meeting, Brother J.D., and he was telling the story to get to that point. And he was talking about Jesus and how sensitive he was in ministry. And he's painted the stage about all the people that were thronging Jesus and all the people that were surrounding him with a woman with issue of blood and the pulls and the distractions and the street and the fact that Jairus had come and he's going to raise a little girl from the dead. And at the very moment, then his, the pet come from his house, don't trouble the master anymore, the daughter's already dead. You're dealing with a situation where he's the hope, he's the one expected to go raise the girl from the dead. The streets are full of people. They've heard this. They're following him along wailing. You've got all of this going on around him. And she comes in the press behind, <laughs> touches the hem of his garment. And in the middle of all that chaos, it stopped Jesus in his tracks. Yes. Yay. How sensitive do you have to be? Come on. Come on. To no matter what's going on in the moment. Yes. Because the Holy Ghost is always, do you hear me? Always, always doing more in any given moment than you have any idea He's doing. Yes. 
So while he's pressing through all that mess to raise that girl from the dead, here's a woman that is getting a financial miracle, a family miracle, a social miracle, an incurable disease miracle. Her body gets healed. Her mind gets clear. Her spirit gets cleansed. Her finances stop bleeding out. Her husband can come home. Her social life gets restored. Her destiny gets restored. And it was just a still small touch. And he felt it drain out. And he stopped and said, who touched me? I'm telling you, the body of Christ needs to know right now that's flowing out in this crowd right now. There is virtue flowing out in this crowd right now. You don't have to wait for somebody to do something spectacular. You need to receive it on the inside of you. It's happening right now. His name is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the healing spirit. He's the delivering spirit. He's the helper. Glory be to God. He's the helper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right, so this is what I want to finish with, this phrase. It keeps coming up in my heart. First responders. Can you say that? First responders. We're going to be known as first responders. I said we are going to be known as first responders. Go ahead and stand on your feet. I, I, I can see now I'm probably not getting back fully to Luke 4, so let me just read this, and I've got a couple of statements. In Luke chapter 11... Now, I want you to see this. It'll be very, very quick, but I need you to stay with me on it because your eyes are about to be enlightened to something. Mm -hmm. It came to pass as he was praying. He said, teach us how to pray. And here's what he said. When you pray, say, Our Father. Say, Father. Father. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Say, Thy will. Be done, be done, as in heaven, as in heaven so, in so in earth. Now look what he says here. Give us, Give us this, day, this day our daily bread. Our, daily bread. our, Father, our Father, Father, give us, give us daily, bread, daily bread that is your will. That is your will. Our, Father, our Father, thy will be done. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy Daily bread, Daily bread. Manifest, manifest on earth, on earth. Just, like just like it is in heaven. It is in heaven. We here at Harvest International Ministries want to invite you to connect with us. If you would like to receive more teaching or if you are interested in partnering with him, check us out on the web at tracyharris.tv. Every Sunday morning, you can be part of our online congregation by live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Roku, or TV. Please share these resources with your family and friends as together we reach this generation with the healing power of Jesus Christ.